Are you ready to elevate your SEO game? Check out harborseo.ai today. Start growing your website today with harborseo.ai. For those of you who have been watching my channel for a while now, you'll know that I love to grow websites. Harness AI for better SEO today. Try harborseo.ai. Fuck's sake, it's a real fucking... Harness AI for better SEO today. Harbor link in the description. Wait, let's see that again. It's almost there. It's almost there. It's almost there. Harness AI for better SEO. The link to Harbor is in the description of this video. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another live stream. We're going to be talking about Perplexity Pro and how it can be used for SEO. Also, just wanted to talk about this new feature that they've added, which I absolutely love. This might be a slightly shorter live stream today, just so everyone knows, but we'll see how we get on. Now, there's something called fusion chain prompting. I don't know how many people have actually heard of this, but another way of uh, saying this is also chain of thought prompting. These two methods of kind of prompting are super, super interesting. Uh, it's agentic in nature, and I'm gonna show how Perplexity have added this in a really, really cool way. So Perplexity is a powerful AI search engine that can be used for a number of different things. This is supposed to show you the best features of this incredibly powerful tool. This does use Perplexity Pro, just so you know. Um, and also, if you just go on your settings, personally recommend using either 3.5 Sonnet or you could use uh, Sona Large as well or Sona Huge, which does seem to work pretty well as well. And they do also have image generation, so they also have Flux.1. So we might actually be able to do something cool uh, uh, with this that I haven't even planned to do. You want to make sure that you're on these settings and you do have Perplexity Pro. Also, this is pretty cool. I did just notice this as well. This is a new feature that they've added, AI data retention. AI data retention allows Perplexity to use your searches to improve AI models. Turn this setting off if you wish to exclude your data from this process. Okay, so that's not what I thought it was. What it seemed before is that it was remembering things from previous conversations, which is also very, very interesting. Let's talk about this agentic workflow that they've added. So I'm just gonna do something that I did a couple of streams back where I'm just gonna send this prompt here. Can you find real data that could accompany this article? Do not add the data to the article. Just give me interesting data as a summary. Give historical data where possible so it can be used as a comparison. And then I'm just gonna grab a random article here and we will drag down like this. Uh, we'll do paste to markdown and then we'll send this with it. So I just wanna show this in action. This isn't really a, a method, so to speak, but what it does is it does this really, really interesting workflow where you can see what it's actually doing is it's it's using agents or it's almost an agentic workflow. Uh, you might say, oh, this isn't agentic. It's not agents, where are the agents? But if you think about it, it's almost like perplexity is one agent and then the creation of the searches, because you can see See, this is a search on Google. Historical data, luxury overcoat sales trends, luxury overcoat market trends history. So it's searching these, but first it needs to create them, then it needs to search them, then it needs to scrape the results, and then it needs to give you a summary. So this is an agentic workflow in that sense, and it's actually using fusion chain prompting, or not fusion chain, but chain of thought, because it passes information down each one. This is still actually going, which is a little bit strange. It should have finished by now. Obviously, when I decide to make, do a stream, it stops working after testing this like 10 times. So watch how it actually does the research. research. It's very interesting to see how it does it. First, it discusses the question. So it discusses the question. Instead of just, if you just put this on ChatGPT or whatever, there's no, it doesn't discuss the question. So it didn't even do a search here. So it's literally just, this, this, this is made up as far as I know. So I'm just gonna say use Bing. And then it just creates one question normally. Oh, they, they've changed it as well. So it, it creates one question. This is the search result. These are the three search results from this question. So it does to a certain extent, it does, ChatGPT does what perplexity does, but at a much lower uh, scale. And there's no, there's no agentic workflow here. It's just search results. And then his, uh, it, it, it is an agentic workflow, but it's not fusion chain prompting like uh, perplexity. So I would say this is a much worse version of perplexity to be honest with you. So we can see what it does is it creates <clears throat> four different steps to get the information that you need. Then it creates search queries for each of those steps and it does those searches one by one and then it finds and scrapes search results. So again, we can see here, it's doing the same thing but with different search results because it has a different goal now. By changing the goal in each step, it allows you to find much more information, much more accurate information. So you might think, what the hell is the point of this? Well, the point is that you're looking to get better results, right? So this 
this is agentic in its nature because it doesn't just do the search or make up the data straight away, which is exactly what ChatGPT did. Like this could be to a certain extent real, uh, this data here, it could have been real. We, I'm, I'm not gonna bother checking. It might not be real and it's probably just made up or you know, it might hallucinate or whatever it might be. So that's what uh, ChatGPT does. It just kind of answers the question without necessarily the context of real life responses. And, uh, and it doesn't just do the search as well. Like ChatGPT just does the search. Historical data on luxury outerwear, market trends, materials and consumer preferences for high end overcoats 2024. Now that's not a particularly good search, is it really? Like you're not gonna find the best results doing a search like that. It's much better to do broken up searches looking for specific pieces of information through specific web searches. This is actually what Harbour does to a certain extent as well. It's not quite as detailed as Perplexity at the moment, but Harbour does do something very similar with its reverse engineering uh, that it does. It basically does a search for five competitors. One of the things it does is it breaks down the keyword that Harbour gives you into a much smaller keyword and then does like five to six searches so that you're not just looking for one keyword you're looking for a decent amount of information over the over the internet instead of just one response or one search which is what ChatGPT does which is woefully it's just it's just not good enough to be honest with you it's not good enough I know they're coming out with search GPT obviously but at the moment ChatGPT is just simply not good enough I am thinking of replacing perplexity in harbor and I'm going to talk about why the really annoying thing about perplexity is that the API is complete trash it's really 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 bad Okay, so this is just uh, the playground. Just look at the difference in response from Perplexity Pro compared to the API. So this is why I'm thinking of removing Perplexity from uh, Hub and replacing it with my own scraping tool, basically. So it's hard to actually show this in action. Let me just, let me do the same search here. So look up two men dot it and find 10 internal links for an article about sneakers. So let's see how Perplexity Pro does this. It says fetching the content of the two men dot it website. That's not how it was supposed to do this. I don't know why it's doing it like this. Okay, it's managed to do it anyway. And that was not how it was supposed to do it, but it has managed to do it. So you can see it's found the links here, but if I do the same search, you'll see the provided sources do not include information about the website two it or any specific articles related to sneakers on that site. However, it's a blah, blah, blah. And it just creates a load of crap. It's almost like it's not even connected to the internet. Like I don't really know what it's doing. It, it uses Llama. In my experience, the API of Perplexity is absolutely trash, but the front end of Perplexity is absolutely amazing, which is really, really interesting to me. And it's because of this agentic workflow, which again, I, I don't want to just always talk about Harbor, but Harbor has agentic workflows in it as well because we take data from one place give data to one prompt which sorts that that sends it to another prompt which then contextualizes that that sends it to you know an outline prompt and blah 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 so there's this all there's this chain of flow or chain of thought uh, process it's not quite agentic these two things are very very close in nature agentic normally means that there's you know a specific agent so perplexity is agentic because there is an agent that creates these questions most likely and there's then the agent that does the search, and then there's the agent that does the scraping. What this means is that the average answer is much more accurate than when you're asking the Perplexity API. This step-by-step -step process is known to increase accuracy when it comes to basically any LLM system or any kind of AI. When you start with one prompt, give it another prompt, give it another prompt, give it another prompt, and then give it another prompt, it works much better than just giving it a prompt. So this is really really important because these agentic workflows or chain of thought kind of prompting massively increases the accuracy of your results and that's why I really like perplexity AI but I'm not really a big fan of perplexity the perplexity API in like in the back end of Harbor for example I'm not a big fan of it because it just doesn't work massively so this is proven as I said before and as I explained before by the API versus using pro if you don't know the perplexity API uses llama 3.1 and it performs significantly worse than the pro version of Perplexity. I'm actually, as I said, I'm really close to changing Perplexity for something else, maybe my own system. Um, I actually think I could do a better job 
uh, or at least change a couple of things about perplexity. One thing I don't like about perplexity is that it can't find links very well. So I'm just going to say use the internet. What it normally does is it, yeah, it does a site, so a search operator search, and then it identifies links like you can see here. That's what it's done now. Uh, give me a list of the links, please. So one thing I really don't like about perplexity and one thing I would recommend that they change immediately is that there's no way to get the image links from this page. So if I say, can you get me the image links from the from number one, please? It doesn't seem to be able to do this. Maybe it will be able to do it this time, but yeah, it doesn't seem to have been able to do it. Yeah, it can't get them. So one thing I would recommend is that they look at Firecrawl, for example, something like that, in order to scrape pages directly. I think that would really, really make Perplexity one of the best tools um, for doing research and things like that. And also for prepping, you know, content machines or whatever it might be. So that's one thing that I don't really like about Perplexity Pro, but it's almost there. This is particularly powerful because of how powerful Agentic workflows actually are. It's so important to understand that AI will not give a good response 99% of the time on its first prompt. It takes three, four, five prompts to get really good content or you know whatever you're doing really. AI, the, this like this thinking and chain prompting and agentic workflows, it mimics reasoning, okay? Because it's like it, it it's like thinking. Reasoning for me anyway is defined as understanding problems before trying to solve them. So what it does is it mimics this understanding a problem before trying to solve the problem, which may it makes sense that afterwards the end result is going to be even better. I think it's really, really important to realize this, this reasoning is probably, uh, this is probably the change that OpenAI have made to ChatGPT for, it's called Strawberry, or I think it's also called Q Star or something. What is it called? Q something. <laughs> This is what the, the, I believe anyway, obviously I'm not, I'm not partial to any information that other people aren't partial to, but in my opinion, this is the big change that ChatGPT will have made for Strawberry or their next iteration, whatever they call it. I don't think they'll call it GPT-5. It's this ability to reason before trying to answer the question. One of my biggest criticisms of Claude and ChatGPT is that they, that they, it, the, these AIs, these LLMs feel the need or have the need or it's just innately part of their programming to always give a response. Whether they know the answer, whether they don't know the answer, whether it's accurate, whether it's inaccurate, they will always give you an answer. And also they will always believe you when you say something is correct or incorrect, 99% of the time. Which also causes problems because if what you're giving it is incorrect and you're saying it's correct, then it will believe you over the truth which is another really, really big issue that it has. So if something like Perplexity or, for example, GBT, uh, Strawberry, managed to crack this issue, that's when LLMs are gonna just get ridiculously powerful. When they stop feeling the need or being programmed to always give an answer, regardless of the situation, and also to give the first answer that it is that comes up. You think of Perplexity itself as one agent which formulates questions for the searcher agent to answer and then the scraping agents scrape key details from the search results. This is the kind of whole workflow of perplexity. So this is how it works. You, it reads and interprets the prompt from the user. It generates two, three, four, five, six, however many steps that are needed to complete the task. This is particularly good with programming, by the way, I'll say good for programming because it looks for all of the latest APIs, all of the latest documentation, all of the latest everything, and then it starts to code instead of just coding with old knowledge, bad knowledge, incorrect knowledge, made up knowledge, which is kind of what ChatGPT and Claude do if you don't give it the right documentation. It then generates questions or research topics in each task and does so, doing so at several points, and then it answers each question one by one, and then it consolidates all of that in information with a consolidation prompt, which is pretty much exactly what fusion chain prompting is. Well, fusion chain prompting is, is three levels because it uses different LLMs to ask the same question. But if you just get rid of the first, if you, if you get rid of all of them except the first one on here, on this image, then this is kind of what perplexity is doing. So not the Claude and not the Google, just the ChatGPT or just the Google. This is what Perplexity is doing and the results are really, really good.
This is called fusion chain prompting, and is a huge. It's not really fusion chain prompting, but whatever. It's very very similar, and it's it's chain of thought prompting, and it's a huge improvement on the original concept behind perplexity, which was fairly which was to do a fairly useless Google search, kind of like ChatGPT is doing now. This was like the old version of perplexity here, where it just does a, a shitty Google search and a bad scrape. How can we manage chain of commands for best seller mem results for automated systems like auto blog posts? Yeah. I mean, that would take me hours to get into, but Faizan, what I recommend is you think about, you, you plan the process first, and then you make the process, okay? So think about what needs to be fed to what and when, and then feed all of that to an AI to, to generate it. That's what I did for Harbour, basically. I, I, me and Rowan conceptualized what data needs to be fed to which prompt at which time, and that's how we did it, basically. So yeah, th it's a huge improvement on the original concept behind perplexity, which was to do what ChatGPT still does. The fusion chain prompting method gives a huge accuracy boost and gives the results a much needed boost in quality, which is why I use, I personally use Perplexity Pro for research steps, unless you have an entire system like Harbour, to do it for you. So Harbour does do a lot of what Perplexity does uh, and soon it'll do even more because I'm going to remove Perplexity I think at some point just because it's kind of annoying and I would change a few things about it. But yeah guys that's pretty much going to be the end of the live stream. Uh, Faizan I wish you luck with the auto blogging system. I have some on GitHub by the way if you want to have a look at some very basic systems that I created on my public GitHub there are some examples of auto bloggers that I've made but they're not anywhere near what Harbour is, obviously, but they're, they're, a, they're a very early Harbour, basically, but they're, yeah. Can we put a link to that in the chat when this is over? It's just uh, github.com slash income stream surfer. It's this one here, probably. It's one of these, I don't know. There, there's loads. I've got loads of them, guys. It's just, uh, you'll have to look around on my GitHub. There's loads of stuff on there. It's just github.com slash income stream surfer. There's some stuff on there for you to have a look at. But yeah, we'll end the stream there, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching this live, you're an absolute legend. If you're watching this as a, at the end of this video, you're also an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.